Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm very honored and doubly honored that it was given to me and uh, presented to me by Dean Wendt, the president of Concordia Seminary, Bishop Rhodes, our new bishop, and I had lunch there at his invitation shortly after the bishop's installation. We hold the Lutheran community in great affection and respect, and especially Dean Wendt and the um, Missouri City Lutheran community for its strong pro-life stance. I also want to greet everyone here from Allen County Right to Life. It's a special honor to be seated with and to welcome my new bishop uh, who has att uh, attended, and this is quite a pro-life cred credential since he was uh, in high school, with the exception of the years he was in Rome, has attended every single um, a national pro-life march in Washington without exception. So we want to assure you, you have received a bishop with extraordinary uh, devotion, as any Catholic bishop should be, to the pro-life cause for our country and for our church. So we're especially glad to welcome you, uh, Bishop Kevin Rhodes. I, I accept this award on behalf of the, all in the Catholic Church and our brothers and sisters in other churches who stand every day for the inviability of human life. I accept it on behalf of those who pray, as our bishop did recently with many others, as part of the 40 Days for Life, and a part of those who pray the rosary week in and week out at the abortion centers here in Allen County and beyond. I accept it for all those who work at the Women's Care Center, the Hope Center, and the Christ Child Society, and other crisis pregnancy centers, and act as, act as counsels for the dignity of the woman and the man who would be tempted to take away the life of the unborn child. Accept it on behalf of the unborn children saved by all of you. In this letter to the Romans, St. Paul speaks about the law which is written in our hearts. That same intrepid apostle went to the Areopagus, the Wall Street, or the university, or both of his time. Pained by the idols which he had seen around Athens, he nevertheless chose to speak of the one true God. And now even without revelation, which we hold dear in the books of the Bible, Dean Wendt is a great biblical scholar, that even without these and the teaching of the church, people could find the love of God in their hearts. For God, says St. Paul, is not far from any one of us, and in him we live and move and have our being. I accept this award as a pastor, a shepherd, a teacher, a Catholic priest, not a politician, though I respect the dignity of political office and the great responsibility of those who bear it. In the scriptures, we hear the cry of God when Cain killed his brother Abel. What have you done? And we hear the cry of Cain that he was an outcast and he was hiding himself from God. This is what we do in reaction to this crime and sin. We hide ourselves. That is why Bishop Rhodes is strengthening and reorganizing Project Racial to help people to face, face it and repent and find mercy and love and the forgiveness of the church. The great warrior for life, John Paul II, said the question which Cain cannot escape, what have you done, is addressed, said the Pope, to all people today to make them realize, to make us realize the extent and the gravity of the attacks against life which continue to mark human history, to make us discover what causes the attacks and feeds them, and to make all of us ponder the serious consequences which derive from these ta attacks for the existence of individuals and peoples and for our future. I commend you, his encyclical, 
the gospel of life. He points out that attacks on its life at its most vulnerable stages, at the beginning and the end, which once were crimes, have now become rights, which once was considered a crime in all 50 states, is now a right, and the state is called upon to give legal recognition and to make them available, and some would even oblige healthcare workers to perform them. But there are echoes in our hearts as Jews and Christians, the book of Deuteronomy, beloved by Jews and Christians. See, I have set before you this day life and death, good and evil. I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your descendants may live. This brings us face to face with the question of freedom so honored in this country, freedom. But freedom is not just the right to do anything. It's the capacity, as John Paul wrote, freedom is an inner capacity to do what one should do, what one ought. Freedom takes into account the rights of others, the common good, the right of the child. What will happen to us if there is no resistance to these attacks on life? What will our future be? The old, one of the oldest documents in the church, the Didache, second century says, there are two ways, a way of life and a way of death. There's a great difference between them. In accordance with the precept of the teaching, you shall not kill, you shall not put a child to death by abortion, nor kill it once it is born. The way of death is this, they show no compassion for the poor. They do not suffer with the suffering. They do not acknowledge the creator. They kill their children and by abortion cause God's creatures to perish. They drive away the needy, oppress the suffering. They are advocates of the rich. They are unjust judges of the poor. They are filled with every sin. May you be able to stay ever apart, O children, from these sins. Finally, there is a great tendency to obscure what is happening, to cloud it. John Paul writes, today many people's consciences, the perception of its gravity has become progressively obscured. The acceptance of abortion in the popular mind, in behavior, and even in large self is a telling sign of an extremely dangerous crisis of the moral sense, which is becoming more and more incapable of distinguishing between good and evil. Even, he says, when the most fundamental rights, the right to life, is at stake. Given such a grave situation, we need now more than ever to have the courage to look the truth in the eye, says the Pope, and to call things by their proper name without yielding to convenient compromises or the temptation of self-deception. In this regard, the repro reproach of the prophet is extremely straightforward. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil and who put, put, put darkness for light and light for darkness. Especially, he writes, in the case of abortion, there is a widespread use of ambiguous terminology, such as interruption of pregnancy, which tends to hide abortion's true nature. Perhaps this phenomenon is itself a symptom of a great uneasiness of conscience, but no word has the power to change the reality of things. Procured abortion is the deliberate and direct killing by whatever means is carried out of a human being in the initial phase of his or her existence. This is what John Paul meant when he said in Columbia, South Carolina, he spoke of his meeting there later at an ad limina visit in Rome. He praised America. He says, how he could not in Europe, he said, be present at a place 95% Protestant and have a, a crowd of 100,000 people 
praying with the Pope in an ecumenical effort. And he said, America, how can you speak of the right to choose without speaking of the right to choose wisely? Pope John Paul II. Finally, I would, a few years ago, at the, a visit of, of this Pope to our country, he spoke at one of the old Spanish missions in California. I was there. A bishop gave a talk and he responded. And he said to us as bishops, as teachers, you must teach these difficult truths on moral issues so people are attracted to them, so they see their beauty. He used the word attraction twice. Later at our visit, we had lunch with him, and I, and I said, Holy Father, how do we do this? How do we teach about these difficult things so people are attracted to their beauty and their truth? He got very serious, and like a philosopher, which he was, he said, it is necessary, he said, to understand the soul of the woman. All these things which were meant to liberate her, premarital sex, contraception, abortion. Have they liberated her or they ha have they enslaved her? The dignity of the woman is, is at stake in our struggle. I am very honored and I, by this award, I don't feel worthy of it. I think you people, Kathy Humberger and people like that, who work day in and day out but I accept this award in their name, and thank you. Thank you.